You've probably heard of math, right? It's that annoying thing with numbers and letters that everybody hates. But did you know? Over 350% of math is super racist? RACIST! Keep watching and find out how. I'm Zach, and this is my Strange Corner of Thought. So math is crazy freaking old in human standards. Oldest known object believed to express numbers is an Ashango bone discovered in modern day Congo that dates back to 22,000 years. That's really old. Because math has been around for a really long time, there are many different types of math to fulfill the functions that society needs. Egyptian math can be traced back at least 5,000 years. It is a base 10 mathematical system, meaning it has 10 integers, 1 through 10. This is the same math system the metric system uses today, where we have 10 integers, 1 through 9, plus 1 with a placeholder after it, or 10. The hypothesis is this developed because humans have 10 digits on their hand. But base 10 wasn't the only mathematical game in town. 4,000 years ago, the Babylonians relied on a sexagesimilar, or base 60 math structure, which is 1 through 59, with 1 and 60 having the same symbol. Wait, we don't have 60 fingers, toes, or even limbs! How'd they even get this? Well, each of your four fingers has three joints, which means each hand is made up of 12 joints minus the thumb. 12 times 5 equals 60. Base 60 is useful because it is divisible by the first six integers and the number 10. We still have remnants of base 60 in our own math. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. A circle is 360 degrees, i.e. 60 times 6. There are roughly 360 days in a year. There's also a base 12 system, or duodecimal, that is based on the number 12, which is closely related to base 60. 12 times 5 equals 60. We also see this today in that there are 24 hours in a day, 12 times 2, and 12 months in a year. The Mayans used a vigesimal, or base 20, math system. The intuitive hypothesis is because humans have 20 fingers and toes. We see these number systems being invented and used by cultures across the world independently of each other. This tells us that when humans start having a civilization, they intuitively figure out the numbers which are easiest to manipulate to fulfill the needs of said civilization. Base 10, 12, 20, and 60 are so common because those numbers can be broken up a ton of ways that are super useful to civilizations. You can use these to count very large numbers, seemingly indefinite, but also very small numbers using fractions. What's important here for us to ask is when we look at the archaeological record of these early civilizations, like the Egyptians, the Babylonians, Maya, and so on, what is it that they are using this math for? Babylonian clay pots include measurements of plots of land, charts for figuring out taxes, record keeping, and other bureaucratic needs. Evidence in Egypt shows a society that records oxen, goats, and slaves in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. If your civilization has a shit ton of stuff, then you're going to need really big numbers to keep track of it all. All of which continues in our own modern society, where we manipulate numbers in ways the Egyptians wouldn't even have been able to fathom. Civilized math is a math concerned with indefinitely large quantities that can be broken up into extremely small pieces. The need of a civilization that has taxes, private property, hundreds of thousands of slaves, and so forth, is what generates the so-called civilized mathematic. So, is math racist? So far, we've only discussed civilized maths, i.e. the math needed to fulfill the needs of civilizations. But what if I told you there were other kinds of math? Uncivilized math, if I dare say. The first uncivilized math we'll look at is the math system of the Yanomami. The Yanomami live in the Amazon in both Brazil and Venezuela. Evidence shows they migrated across the Bering Sea 15,000 years ago, which is a really, really long time ago. They were first contacted by people of a colonial complexion in the 1940s during a war between Brazil and Venezuela. The Yanomami live in small communities of anywhere from 50 to 400 people. Everyone lives together under a communal roof called a shibono. The Yanomami math system has only three values. One, two, and many. 
Yep, that's it. Anything over two is simply many, regardless if you're talking about four rocks or 40 rocks. The Yanomami do have a notion of equivalence, i.e. one equals one, two equals two, and many equals many. They also have notions of greater and lesser. Two and many are greater than one, and two is less than many. Yet, Anthropologists couldn't fathom how the Yanomami couldn't determine differences in quantities greater than two. This shows us that math comes out of the demands of society, and that math itself is historical and provides a worldview members of the society use to understand the world around them, including how they literally see things. Civilizations want private property, taxation, rent, and class difference, so their math allows them to have this. But the Yanomami don't need any of these things, so many was more than enough. The next math we'll look at are those by the Tule, or Kuna peoples. The Tule are native to Panama and Colombia. The Tule do not believe in odd numbers, period. No ones, threes, certainly no sevens and thirteens, heavens no! The Tule's reasoning is that nothing in the world exists in isolation. This is a metaphysical assertion that affects their worldview and is manifest in their mathematics. Houses are always built in two. Baskets are woven in two, four, or six at a time. As with so many native and indigenous communities, when people of a colonial complexion showed up, they started colonial genocide. This included forced schooling, where colonizer teachers insisted two lay children believe in odd numbers. One child is reported as saying, because you have your idea of your homes in your areas, you want to make sure no one is standing in your area, or you have to kill each other. But I don't need that. The Tule are radical communitarians, whose society simply doesn't need private property to function, and their math reflects that. On the sky. The last uncivilized math we'll look at is the ultimate anti-math from the East Cree First Nations tribe in Quebec. Unsurprisingly, the Canadian government was trying to take some First Nation land. Shocker, I know. In 1971, the Canadian government took the East Cree tribe to court in order to prove the land wasn't really theirs, and therefore could be opened to government exploitation. The government lawyers tried to show that the East Cree didn't know the land because they didn't really live on it, hunt on it, etc. A government lawyer asked a Cree hunter how many rivers were in his territory. The hunter was unable to answer. Aha! The government lawyer probably said, Clearly you don't know anything about this land because it's not yours. At this point, the lawyer for the East Cree tribe began to laugh uncontrollably at his opponent's statements. The Cree lawyer asked the hunter to describe the rivers in his tribe's territory. The Cree hunter described each one in explicit detail, ultimately describing 11. He spoke of the river which was best to fish in April, the river with unfriendly bears nearby, what kind of fish were in every river, and which rivers were good for swimming or drinking. The Cree don't rely on numbers for predication, preferring informative, definite descriptions. But the East Cree didn't just find math useless, but as something evil, a horrible tool used by oppressors to describe things they clearly know nothing about. One East Cree testified, quote, counting is something white people do when they don't really know anything. Displaying mathematical knowledge to the Cree is actually a sign of ignorance, not knowledge. To the East Cree, the hunter knew far more about the territory than some bureaucrat of a Caucasian persuasion thousands of kilometers away. So, is math racist? Well, the past couple hundred years, Western math, which is Bayes 10 math, absolutely contributed to some nefariously racist ass shit. There's no doubt about this. Like, a lot. But math is a tool that we've invented to fulfill the needs of society. Like the death ray. It's neither good nor bad, racist or non-racist. It's all in how you use it. If your society needs a type of math that it can use to oppress people on racial, ethnic, or class lines, it might just be an itsy bit racist. This doesn't mean that we with our civilized math should just throw it away. 
Base 10 is super fucking useful for non-oppressive things too. The literal way I'm talking to all of you via computer and the internet shows the awesome stuff civilized math can do. But what is most important to understand is regardless of whether your society uses base 10, base 12, or base 60, or just straight up hates math, it is clear there are mathematical systems out there which are completely different precisely because those societies just function differently and have different needs and demands. And this clearly shows us that math is deeply historical and political because it expresses the value of the society that constructs it. So maybe if we change our values from one of extreme competition, scarcity, and exploitation to one of individual and social fulfillment, plenty and sustainability, that might change how our math is being used and contribute to its overall evolution.